Hello. So in this video, I'm going to walk through what I believe is every book I've bought since the UK went into lockdown uh, towards the end of March. Um, yeah, it dawned on me that I'd been buying quite a lot. And I believe what I've got here in front of me covers pretty much everything. Um, there might be one or two stragglers that I kind of forgot about. Uh, I know there's probably quite a few people out there in a similar boat to me and basically have no willpower. So at the very least, hopefully this will make someone feel better about how much they've managed to buy in lockdown. So here we have Lady Killer by Joel Jones, written and drawn by. Um, this book is from Dark Horse. The library edition here, um, really beautiful, nice oversized artwork uh, printed on really thick glossy pages really high quality feeling book the bookmark ribbon here um, something always nice to see included on a book like this gives it that nice premium deluxe feel uh, i haven't read this yet so it's set in the 60s and the basic premise is housewife by day assassin by night can't wait to get stuck into that and give it a read Next we have uh, both Volumes 1 and 2 of the Umbrella Academy Deluxe Editions. These both come in a slipcase. Each one has a book and a art print. So I've read the first volume, uh, Apocalypse Suite, uh, Volume 2, Dallas. I've yet to read. Um, I did enjoy the first volume. The artwork was incredible, definitely worth getting in this oversized format. The story was pretty good as well, uh, very cartoony, zany, suited the artwork style. Uh, this is Gerard Way and Gabriel Barr. So volume one here out of the slipcase, uh, you can see the book has this nice embossed logo. Uh, the artwork here on its nice oversized presentation. Pages layout very nice and flat. The paper quality is that really nice thick glossy paper. Uh, there's definitely no seeing through that when you're, you know, on a mostly white page. Sometimes you can kind of see the artwork bleeding through from the page behind it. None of that here. Uh, really high quality again. Library editions from Dark Horse seem to be some of the best built books around. And here we have the included art print, which is put into this nice hardback kind of folder. And a quick look here at volume two, the Dallas storyline, which again, I've not read yet. And the art print here. Yeah, it doesn't really serve a purpose other than just giving you a bit more for your money, um, adding to that premium format feel, and also just making it stand out from other books on the market. I've yeah never seen this kind of thing done before, so it's really quite cool. So here we have Crawl Space from Rick Remender and Kieran Dwyer with a assortment of various artists here. Um, this is a horror anthology book, so lots of uh, short stories. So this is the standard kind of Rick Remender format where it's slightly bigger than an oversized hardcover, probably a little bit smaller than something like an absolute. Uh, um, so it is kind of a common theme with all of his books uh, that come out of Image. The build quality of the book overall is pretty good. However, annoyingly, you can see uh, the binding here has been glued down to the spine. Uh, so you don't get any kind of eye forming there that helps those pages lay out a bit more flat. So that's probably the most disappointing thing about this uh, that I found. Um, I've yet to read any of the actual book, but I don't think that will hamper my enjoyment of it. 
So next up, I bought all three volumes of Black Science, the oversized Rick Remender format. Volume one here was the re-released version that has the better binding. I believe the original uh, printing of the, that book had a binding that was probably quite similar to what we just saw with the crawl space hardcover, where the binding was glued to the spine of the book so that it couldn't really uh, lay flat properly. I believe this version also might have some added content compared to that version, uh, but I'm not really sure what they would have included. So when I saw this first hardcover come back in stock on Amazon, um, I just had to jump on it. So I haven't read this whole series. I did start picking it up when it first came out in single issues, but unfortunately, not long after that, I had to stop buying single issues for a while. So I haven't read most of this series. However, I don't feel like I need to have read much of this story to know that it's something that I want to own in this oversized format purely based on the artwork uh, by Matteo Scalera. Um, so the basic premise is that there are a team of scientists jumping around in a multiverse, which obviously gives the artist freedom to imagine all kinds of different worlds, universes. So the Binding here is really good. Uh, obviously, this is the remastered version and the um, I won't go through them, but volumes two and three, uh, the binding is just as good as this. Uh, and obviously all three are printed on this really nice high quality paper. Um, yeah, this is just gorgeous stuff. The binding is really quite good that even early on in the book, it lays flat very easily and you don't get any gutter loss at all with things like these beautiful splash pages. So I can't wait to get caught back up with this series now that I've got all three volumes. So here I got the first two volumes of Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughan and Cliff Chang. Uh, this is something I've read a few issues of in single issues, decided yeah, I like this and we'll get it in whatever deluxe edition format it comes out in. So these two <clears throat> have been out for a little while now and the third volume I think is upcoming towards the end of the year. Um, yeah, really striking looking books. So these are going to look great on the shelf. I don't, it's my first bright pink book that I own. And yeah, the cover on this one is this weird kind of almost color changing. Um, shiny silver. Uh, it really is hard to pick up on camera but it's quite striking in person. So this is set in the 80s and revolves around a group of teenage girls who are paper girls and somehow gets sucked into a story w involving time travelers and all kinds of craziness. Um, I don't really know much more than that. I, it's been a while since I read the first issues that I did read. Uh, anything by Brian K. Vaughan is worth checking out. Uh, really loved Cliff Chang on the uh, New 52 Wonder Woman run. And yeah, um, can't wait to get stuck into those. So I got the first volume of the East of West hardcover collection. I believe there'll be three volumes in total. Um, the third volume coming out later in the year. The second one is out of print at the minute. I've heard rumors that they are going to reprint it when they release the third volume. So I picked this one up in anticipation of that. This is something I haven't read all of, but I did pick this up in single issues back when it first started to come out. Um, love the artwork. Jonathan Hitman's story and Nick Dragata artwork. Um, so it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic, futuristic western revolving around the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, yeah, can't wait to get stuck into that. I really hope they reprint that volume two um, and I don't have to hunt it down for ridiculous prices. But I figured it's worth taking a gamble. So here I got volumes one and two of Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. 
um, this was a really cool series. I read these pretty soon after I got them. Um, so basic premise is that it centers around a kind of robot apocalypse slash uprising. Um, I don't really want to say too much more than that. I think it's just worth jumping right in and discovering it for yourself, but I really enjoyed it. The artwork is really nice uh, and painterly. Uh, it has this really kind of nice texture to it. Um, so obviously it's Jeff Lemire, so there's some bits in here that uh, will tug at your heartstrings a little bit. Um, particularly one of my favorite bits was towards the end of this first volume where it gives you the backstory of a robot that is a driller robot and it's very surprising how effective that was uh, as an issue to end that first volume on. The same team have gone on to do a second series called Ascender which is teased at the end of the second volume um, but don't be put off you can just stop here at Descender if you wanted to. This is a whole story complete in two parts and definitely worth picking up. This is uh, the four volume collection of The Wicked and the Divine. So this is a story by Kieran Gillen and artwork with Jamie McKelvey. I've read about half of this story so far and I love it. It's really quite a cool uh, take on celebrity and superpowers and has a really cool mythology built into it. Um, so this is the first volume here and so one of the things I really love about this series is the artwork from Jamie McKelvey. He's really great at using the facial expressions on the characters to kind of sell the story. Every little interaction between any of the characters feels really genuine, almost like you're filming it with actors. Like every character here is an actor. Also amazing use of color throughout the book. Uh, Matthew Wilson does a excellent job. Um, it's really quite vibrant and uh, everything pops off the page uh, really nicely. So you might be wondering why I said four volumes when there were five books. Uh, basically it's because of this little addition that you get when you buy the volume four book, uh, which is basically a couple of one shots packaged in its own little hardcover that kind of sit outside of the continuity of the main story, which is quite a nice touch. I like how they kept it a bit separate. So as I said, I've read about half of this story and I'm loving it so far. So yeah, I can't wait to um, get through the rest of it. So here I got the first oversized hardcover edition of Monstrous uh, by Marjorie Liu and Senna Takeda. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, so I haven't actually read much of this yet. I read maybe the first issue or two um, just to kind of get a feel for whether or not I would want to continue it. And purely based on the artwork alone, I made the decision that yes, this is definitely something I can see myself enjoying. Um, uh, yeah, gorgeous artwork here. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about this book. So, um, yeah, can't wait to get through the rest of this and see where it goes. So here I got the hardcover edition of Kill or Be Killed by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. So this one I have read. In fact, it's one of the rare books that I actually just cracked open and read in one sitting. Um, again, I think that speaks to how much I enjoyed it, but I think with a creative team like uh, Brubaker and Phillips, you kind of know what you're getting, uh, quality-wise, anyway. So where this story um, really grabbed me was just how grounded it was, even with the kind of supernatural element. Um, and there are a couple of twists and turns in here that I thought were really well done. Um, so don't really want to say too much about it, because I feel like there's some things that 
would easily ruin it, but um, there isn't really much to say when justifying a purchase like this. Um, you should just get it. So here we have Chu, the Omnivore Edition, uh, Volume 6. So I've read the first chunk of Chu, and I've had the first five volumes sat on my shelf for a long time, and I think I basically paused it because I knew that I'd end up running out when I hit the end of Volume 5. So um, yeah, it's a bit overdue, but finally got this Volume 6 here so I could complete the whole set and also probably start it again from the beginning at some point soon when I decide to read the whole thing. Um, I won't flip through it, obviously. It's volume 6. There's probably tons of spoilers in there, so I'll just uh, kind of leave it there. So here we have the Martini edition of the Parker series from Darwin Cook, uh, adapted from Richard Stark's Parker novels. Uh, this was written and drawn by Darwin Cook. I think there's a volume 2 coming out. Really happy to have this. Probably can't tell, but this is bigger than absolute size. Um, doesn't even fit on my shelf properly standing up. So I actually have the first volume of the smaller hardcover series of these books, uh, which started with The Hunter. Um, but obviously with anything Darwin Cook, you're better off getting it in the most oversized format you can. Uh, just to put it in perspective, that's how much bigger it is than the original edition that I have. So as you can see, the difference here between a normal oversized hardcover the smaller version of the format you can get the Parker stories in and the oversized version here with the Martini edition. So I've not actually read any of this series yet, um, which you might think is a bit odd since I've had this original hardcover, um, but I actually didn't really want to crack it open after uh, Darwin Cook passed, uh, sadly, because this version is a signed book plate edition from Gosh Comics in London. Um, yeah, this is actually one of my uh, most prized possessions that I've got in my collection, so I kind of want to keep it a bit more pristine. So really happy to have this uh, new version of this Martini edition. Um, cool. Yeah, this is a big book and yeah, the artwork here Looks incredible on this um, massively oversized edition. Um, yeah, can't wait to get stuck into that. You can probably tell that I'm more focused on things that come in hardcover format, but I do buy things in tray paperback format as well. So these are three I picked up recently. Um, obviously, you can tell the, the theme here. Uh, Samurai Jack is one of my favorite, uh, well, say one of my favorite cartoons. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of entertainment that exists. So um, yeah, obviously you couldn't resist picking up these. So these first two are Samurai Jack classics. I believe this first one contains the retelling of the, um, the three-part first episode slash movie, um, which was released and it's on its own in single issue format, um, as well as just other stories that have been put out that I've never heard of. <clears throat> um, so again, volume two is probably gonna be a pretty similar story in terms of just whatever stories ended up getting out into the world with Samurai Jack get collected in this volume. Um, so this one was the IDW series that was written, I believe, in the last, I don't know, three or four years. Yeah, I couldn't find a date in the book, but I think it's definitely the most recent story uh, of these lot. And uh, I've got no idea what it's about, but it's got Samurai Jack in it. So I'm in. 